Hi folks, hello and welcome to the part 2 of the screencast where we are going to show you how to orchestrate the JBoss ESP services from within the Intel UBPM processes. In the part 1, you have already seen how we have created a JBoss ESP service and published it as a web service. So now the stage is set uh, to call those services from within the Intel UBPM process. So uh, before before doing that, uh, let's just uh, give you a quick recap of what that service uh, was doing for us. Uh, basically, it was doing nothing. It was doing a very basic check. It was uh, uh, sending us a response in the form of an XML. Uh, it is sending us uh, the loan application ID and uh, uh, the status of the loan application uh, in the boolean, uh, whether it is approved or not. So it is sending that. Uh, you can basically log into JBoss uh, uh, web service console uh, on 8080 uh, where this uh, JBoss ESB server is running you can see that uh, service in action and you can basically so this is the service you can actually see the endpoint address also and this is the endpoint address which is which is the basically uh, the wisdom uh, so the so now without further ado let's move uh, towards creating the Intel UBPM process Uh, okay, so for Intel U, uh, I've already downloaded and installed uh, the Intel U server, which is nothing but it comes as a bundled uh, Tomcat container uh, where all my business processes will be installed ultimately. Uh, so, as you can see, I'm using uh, the version 6.0.3.038, uh, which is available as an evaluation version on uh, this site, uh, and also with it, uh, I'm using the modular version um, 6.0.3.050 which also comes uh, uh, along with the server so I've basically downloaded and installed uh, both these so as you can see uh, so this this is the Intel designer which is uh, which is basically a plugin over Eclipse where you can actually create your business processes so now let's create the business process uh, new project uh, select Intel U designer Intel U designer business process project um, so let's name this uh, project as deploy uh, loan approval uh, process uh, so basically my Intel U survey is running on uh, 9999 so I have changed the server URL and this is the place uh, where uh, all my processes will be installed ultimately uh, so I click finish uh, so now uh, a new project is created uh, the build folder is created by default uh, and there is nothing in it obviously uh, so now let's uh, start to create or basically to import the service uh, which we have created in uh, the part 1 uh, for that uh, I'll create a folder name services and let me just import so right click say import uh, choose Intel U designer import remote services so since I'm importing a remote web service which is nothing but a deployed JBoss ESP project I click next uh, now I have to uh, basically give the URL of the uh, the visitor, which I'll copy from here uh, from the JBoss web service console uh, of JBoss ESB. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll do that. I copy it. So click next. Uh, now it gives me uh, the entire visitor. So I have to do a bit of an exercise here after clicking finish. So as you can see, the service will be here. Uh, so as you can see, the EB AWS, the, the entire service is here along with the uh, the XSDs. Uh, let's see that. Uh, so all those XSDs also 
are here. Um, so you have to do a, a little bit of exercise because uh, so here if you see loan auto approval service visual ampersand resource. So basically for this I have to rename it to so it's a, it's a small bug here. I'll have to basically rename it to loan auto approval service wisdom because it doesn't understand the URL patterns as of now uh, there's certain bug in the designer uh, I, I think this bug is only in the evaluation version and uh, not will be there in the uh, in the enterprise edition so I do that I say okay say yes As you can see, uh, vessel will show error, obviously. Uh, so now what to? Let's open this vessel. It is showing uh, the error because we have just uh, we have just renamed uh, the path of the XSDs. Uh, so if you notice. Uh, In the, inside this pistol, uh, the schema location, if you notice, it's still showing me uh, loan auto approval service pistol slash resources slash schema slash. Uh, so it is still showing me the, the OE path. So let me just delete this part. Also, from the response XSD and also from the fault XSD schema location. So I have basically what I did is uh, I have updated the schema location uh, and basically given the schema location as the actual path of those schemas inside my project uh, and I had to update uh, or rename the path of uh, the schemas because this this Eclipse uh, designer or Intelio designer won't take any URL pattern for that. So I did that I say okay and now so all the errors are gone so my service now is uh, ready to be used. Uh, now let's just uh, create uh, the forms form uh, basically let's just create a folder forms where uh, where all my forms will be present right uh, so basically my first form will be uh, the loan applicant form where he will he or she will uh, fill all the details uh, the applicant name uh, the amount of loan that he or she wants, uh, the age, uh, and things like that. The reason for loan. So uh, the best, the best and easiest way of creating an Intel U form is to infer it from the schema, and the schema is already present inside that visual definition. So why not use the schema itself, schema definition, and create the form? So for that, right click forms. New other interview designer, and we will be creating Ajax forms. Next, uh, so we'll be creating the forms in the forms. Uh, you can choose uh, the name of the form loan application request form. Okay. Uh, click on the advanced button and you will see this and you have to check the use custom input and output schemas because you will be basically giving or providing your schemas uh, from where your forms will be inferred uh, generate initial form from the schema select the schema uh, and it will show the path inside your project you have to drill down and go 
to the path of the request and you have to select the schema element inside the loan approval sample request dot xsd so, so if you select the schema element and say ok uh, carefully notice the schema element it uh, contains a personal profile section and the loan detail section so now click ok and your form will be almost ready click finish and the form will be done there for you uh, the designer will basically give some pop-ups to say allow and the form will be opened like this so now you can see basically from the xsds uh, which are basically present in the visual itself your forms uh, are created so you can change those forms and you can add certain things like um, required fields disabled you can change the css the styling uh, basically anything you can change so this is the first form which uh, we have uh, created so let's go and save this form okay and you can also add validations uh, for this form so now this form is ready now let's just uh, move on to our next task okay so the next task is uh, to create the business process itself where we are going to assemble all our elements uh, required for our business processes we'll create some other forms also uh, so now let's just create the business process right click uh, your project select new select other intel your designer and choose business process diagram so this is the place uh, the diagram is the place where you are assembling all those different elements of your business process um, so loan process uh, yeah loan, loan approval process okay uh, click finish it will create the diagram and uh, the associated model files uh, in it it will create a sample task empty task for you uh, okay it has created a, a pool basically uh, and pool will contain different tasks and activities and uh, different elements of a business process and you can create several pools uh, containing those uh, related tasks so let's rename this pool double click on the pool and loan request pool right i will delete this task and we'll drag the loan application request form that we have uh, created and we'll drag that onto our pool and select uh, the init process use loan application request form for people initiating process activity so this is a kind of activity which will be initiated by a human action so which in 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 our case is a uh, applicant filling out his loan request form so as you can see this element is here uh, the next task is to basically call uh, the service which we have already imported which will in turn call the DBOS ESP service uh, so let's do that select task auto approval service so we have named this task as loan auto approval service uh, we'll right click this uh, define an implicit operation this is the last option choose user visual operation because we are going to invoke this operation so we'll choose invoke the operation so this task will send a request message and will eventually receive the response message from uh, calling the web service uh, and we have to select a visual operation click this button 
uh, and you have to basically select the operation from your result so you have to go down till your uh, result the path where your result is there and you have to basically select that particular operation so which is here go type and this is the operation this is the basically the operation the loan auto approval service operation and we have to select this okay so as you can see so this 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 task is uh, also created uh, so this form the form results uh, will be passing those form results to the service as an input so the, now the call to the service is ready Uh, now based uh, on the result of the service call the process flow can go in two directions So if the loan is approved by the service the applicant will be shown a notification for the approval um, So this is the first scenario or else uh, the loan request will be forwarded to the manager for further approval or rejection So the manager can also either approve or reject the loan application definitely based on certain facts or document proofs and then the final notification will be uh, shown to the applicant. So this is the complete flow uh, of the process uh, that we are going to uh, draw right now. So it means that we have to fork our process into two exclusive uh, paths and uh, those the decision on which path uh, the process will go uh, is actually based on the data we are receiving from the service call. Uh, so for that uh, we'll, we'll use a uh, data exclusive gateway so let's just see how we can actually use that select gateway so exclusive database gateway so this is the one that we have to use uh, let's name this as decision okay uh, let's just maximize this one so this is the decision gateway and now this has to be connected to um, the approval or the manager approval form or uh, the notification uh, for the uh, loan application so that means we have to create uh, uh, some more forms to save some time i have already created uh, the forms so let me just quickly uh, copy and paste uh, those forms inside our forms folder uh, let's just do that so it will basically create the three forms for me uh, one for the loan approval notification one for the loan manager approval form which the manager will uh, see and uh, the last one is the basically the loan application result notification the final notification uh, which the loan applica applicant will see <clears throat> okay uh, so now this decision has to be either will it, it will go to uh, the loan approval form let's track this loan approval notification here and since this is a notification we will choose use this form for notification right and we'll connect our uh, gateway to this one like this uh, mind you we haven't given any condition for the gateway as uh, yet which we will uh, do shortly but before that uh, let's just connect uh, this this decision for uh, or the gateway to the second path which is the loan manager approval form so let's just track that form here and now we'll have to choose use loan manager approval form for people activity so this will be displayed as a task uh, when when the manager is going to log in in his system uh, in intel you a user console so let's just click this uh, so the task will be displayed like this in the diagram 
so we'll, we'll basically see loan manager approval form create loan manager approval form complete so this is the request and the reply uh, and the decision gateway has to be connected to this one Like this uh, and now let's make this path as the default one so even if there is no condition it will basically take this path so whatever be the result of uh, loan approval service so the default path is uh, so it, the loan application will be forwarded to the manager for further uh, approval or reject So now we need to provide uh, the conditions for this gateway uh, since this path is not the default one uh, so we will we'll provide uh, the conditions for this uh, but before that let's just name these uh, paths so for this uh, double click and this is the path uh, and the loan application is auto approved so we'll say loan auto approved remove this form a little bit and for this path uh, we'll name it as loan rejected by service yeah uh, so for this one we need to provide the condition so for that just click on this flow uh, go to the mapper in the mapper you have to provide the condition uh, what you are actually doing is uh, you are evaluating the result of the service call so we have to basically find this loan auto approval service response message uh, so this one and this is the one which is which is basically returned by the service call is loan approved so this can be either true or false so now we have to derive our condition based on this uh, variable so now how to create this create a new operator uh, called equal to uh, another one like this this is true now connect your is loan approved to equal to your true to equal to and now you are equal to operator to the condition on the right so now so what does this mean this means this that if the service call response uh, which is, is loan approved uh, if this is equal to true then this condition is passed so basically uh, our process will uh, be forward to this uh, form the notification form if this condition is passed if the is loan approved return from the service call is true so this is how simple it is to just uh, provide your condition for this gateway and there is no need to provide the uh, condition for the second path because this is mutually exclusive and these are two so if this is not true this is the default path uh, which it will take so in case of false it will definitely go to this uh, or forward it to the manager uh, for further approval or reduction yeah and one thing more now just connect uh, our loan approval manager human task to the notification the final notification for that this is the form and this is again a notification the final one and we just connect our 
manager approval form to this. You can align your process to look at look beautiful. Yeah, this is the one. So, so this is your entire process now. Uh, there are still some things that are missing, uh, which we will uh, do now. Uh, the one thing which are missing is uh, giving the these forms uh, access uh, to a certain users or rules. So we'll do that now. So for this uh, loan application request form, select this one uh, in the properties. Click workflow rules. So this one we have already given the rule as the example slash employee. Uh, similarly, we have to give uh, the rules uh, to uh, different forms also. Uh, for example, this loan approval notification uh, uh, notify uh, will also give this rule as example slash employee uh, so employee will be able to see the notification uh, and loan manager approval form this will obviously be displayed to the manager only uh, the user with the role manager so we'll see workflow example slash manager uh, mind you these are the rules which are already defined by Intelio but uh, you are free to create your own users and own rules so I'm using the default uh, users and rules created by Intelio so this one is also there uh, loan application result notification the final notification obviously will be displayed to the user with role employee That's it. So now if I save it, the warnings are gone. So that's it. So our business process is almost ready to be deployed. But one very important thing is missing, which is we haven't yet given uh, the mappings, the data mappings. Okay, now we'll create the mappings for the entire process. So we'll start by creating uh, the mappings for loan auto approval service. So uh, the input uh, for the loan auto approval service is going to be the output of the loan application request form filled by the uh, loan applicant. So we'll choose uh, this one task output loan approval request. So this is what is being filled by and the loan applicant uh, so which contains the personal profile as well as the loan details uh, on the right you will see uh, the input uh, which is to be provided to the service uh, this one so it will also uh, have personal profile and loan details uh, because remember we created this service uh, from the wisdom which expects the input uh, to adhere to a certain uh, schema definition and our form is also based on that schema definition so uh, this is uh, where the connected connect is uh, so we'll now do the mappings so this applicant name should basically be attached to this applicant name on the right uh, similarly for all the other variables for each department loan details um, so let's just quickly demonstrate that department to department similarly loan details subject to subject loan amount to loan amount on the right so 
So the entire input uh, or the output from the form is being supplied uh, uh, to the web service. So that's it. So we have uh, connected uh, the corresponding uh, input and output variables uh, to the Luna 2 approval service. Uh, so this is it. Uh, so basically, uh, this is how we can uh, create the mappings for our rest of the forms for approval notifications for the manager form and for the uh, result notification. So this is uh, really very simple to create a process mapping inside uh, Intel UBPM processor. So after doing that, our business process uh, will be ready to be deployed. Okay, uh, so the business process is almost ready. Uh, now since I have already created the mappings for rest of the forms, uh, now let's just review this uh, business process uh, so the the process starts uh, when the loan applicant uh, fills the form for loan grant request uh, and the loan application goes through the loan auto approval service uh, which uh, is in essence a jboss esp project running on a jboss uh, soa platform and then the process is forked into two exclusive uh, paths uh, if uh, the loan up to approval service uh, approves uh, the loan uh, the loan approval notification will be displayed uh, to the loan applicant uh, or else uh, it will be uh, forwarded to the manager for further uh, approval or rejection so whatever the decision of the manager is the final result notification will be displayed uh, to the loan applicant. So this is the complete process. Uh, we have seen how we have uh, uh, remotely integrated uh, the service uh, in it. So now let's just uh, deploy uh, the process. For deploy, uh, you can see uh, a configure uh, process button on the top of the toolbar. Just click that. Uh, something like this will be displayed to you um, so this is the bundle name that is going to be deployed you can test your server the connection to the server is okay so now we are all uh, set to deploy the process deploying the process is as simple as clicking this deploy button so when I say deploy our process is built and then deployed to the Intel U server let's just wait for the deployment if everything goes well uh, it sees the deployment is successful okay uh, now the, let's just check the installation uh, for logging to localhost mm, gpms console okay let's just log in as admin okay so in the processes uh, tab you will basically see our loan employee loan approval process so this process is active which means it is deployed uh, you can also see the instances in it of the already running processes there is there is no process the instance for our employee loan approval uh, process so now let's go on to uh, test our process okay for that will log in as employee and initiate the process by filling up a loan application. Um, let's log in as M. Smith, who has a role of an employee. 
login go to processes uh, so you will see this uh, loan application request form so this process is created basically for him when we deployed the process you can click this continue it will show that form the initial form the loan application form uh, fill the details fill the form um, the tenure mm. higher studies uh, before that we can also clear the console so that we can see the request so now we are actually testing the real thing we are testing or we are testing the service from the process itself. Um, we go start. This will send the request. Now let's just monitor our console in the JBoss Swap platform. Something is detected and it will just print the request. So at least the, the service is being hit. Um, the response will also be generated. Uh, and basically the response is uh, that we are sending from the service uh, is a false so the loan approved we are saying it uh, returning it as false so it will basically redirect it to the manager for approval so now let's just verify that we'll see the notification in the employee um, see there's no notification right now um, we'll log out and we'll log in as manager. Examples slash E Williams, who has a manager role. And here you will see a task. So this task, and this is just created one minute before. So this task is there. Uh, inside the task tab of the manager you click this continue and he will be displayed a form so you can see uh, the form is being displayed uh, to the manager uh, with the loan applicant details uh, read only whether auto approved so this is the result of the service so this is unchecked which means uh, this is not approved by the service since we have returned false in the response uh, and this is the decision section where uh, the manager can take the decision so we'll take the decision as loan approved and we'll give a remark also Right. and now we'll say complete and what will happen basically the loan applicant will uh, see a notification the final notification so let's log out from the manager console again login as uh, the applicant go to the notifications now here is a notification loan application status notification so we the loan applicant received the notification and this is the entire result of the process so the loan applicant can see the application id the name the loan amount the, all the details that he has filled and the auto approval status it was uh, rejected by the auto approval service but it was approved by the manager with the remarks also so this is the notification that the uh, uh, loan applicant applicant will see at the end of the process so we have just seen uh, how we can actually call those jboss esb services from within the intelio business process 
uh, in the real file scenario in the SOA platform uh, or SOA world it is extremely useful to have our services located somewhere else um, either in a JBoss ESP uh, platform and uh, our business processes can actually call those services so this is it thanks for watching the screencast I hope you have learned uh, a new thing here and yeah definitely I'll, in the future uh, I will try to show some more stuff on JBoss uh, till then goodbye